Hello and welcome to AA Connect. AA Connect is a podcast you can either view or listen to and is produced by the Automobile Association of South Africa. My name is Leighton Beard and in these podcasts we will discuss a range of topics and issues relevant to mobility in South Africa, Africa and the rest of the world and inform you of the trends and debates in this sector. In our world, mobility covers a lot of ground. It talks about automotive issues, transport issues affecting motorists, cyclists and pedestrians, public transport, road infrastructure and legal issues which affect everyone and anyone who is on any type of road in our country. Through these podcasts, we hope to give you some insights into what is happening in the world of transport and mobility and introduce you to some of the relevant role players in this sector. The AA is available on a range of platforms and through various social media. If at any time you would like to get in touch with us, view any of the material that we've produced, please visit one of these sites for more information. And these sites um, are available on the screen right now. Um, In this edition of AA Connect, I'm very thrilled to be joined in studio by the CEO of the AA, Willem Grunewald, and via video link up, the head of motoring division at West Bank, Ghana, MCB. Ghana and Willem, thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, It's great to have you with us. Thank you very much for having me. Um, We spoke earlier about uh, the fact that mobility includes cyclists, and I know, Willem, that's uh, very close to your heart, being such a keen cyclist. So um, I think, Ghana, let's start off with you um, just talking about West Bank. Um, You know, people hear about West Bank, and they hear the name West Bank. I don't know if everybody knows exactly what it is you do, but what what essentially is the job of West Bank? Yeah, so quite simply is we are an asset-based lender. So effectively, um, you know, we focus on financing uh, movable assets. Um, to some extent, we do have some, you know, uh, uh, assets that we would finance that one would consider immovable, such as generators. Mm. But I think, in essence, those are movable from, you know, from one place to another, uh, you know, as opposed to a house. Okay. Um, so that's really the core of our business. So if I wanted um, to buy can... a car, or I wanted to buy a motorbike, um, or I wanted to buy a trailer, that's you guys, I, a trailer, I come to you, you guys. And, and you yeah, guys you want to buy a motorbike, that's yeah. it. Yeah, everything like yeah. that. Um, and and yeah. you guys sort that uh, that process out. I think, um, you know, we've come out of a very um, strange situation in South Africa where in March we went into a bit of a lockdown period um, and, and things kind of went uh, very quiet. Uh, Willem, I think at that stage um, in early March, uh, you know, we, we realized that there was a problem coming. How did the AA kind of approach the whole lockdown situation? Yes, thank you, Leighton. Uh, Clearly, firstly, none of us knew how to contend with this uh, pandemic coming our way. It was all new and something nobody had ever forecast really um, to think would happen in our lifetime. Yeah. So the first thing that was really important to us was the safety of our staff Mm. and the continuity of services. So one of the first things we established was the uh, grant of an essential services permit because we needed to keep our members mobile. The other thing we did immediately was to offer free services to emergency services. Okay, good, uh, yeah. Ambulances and uh, that type of vehicles. So that was quite important to uh, to make sure that first staff members and our client base was taken care of right. and considered. Obviously, then we had to contend with the risk of the virus spreading within our environment, especially within our call center. Mm. And in fact, um, two days or so before uh, the announcement that lockdown would start, we had a virtualized environment where okay. we moved everybody off site and we put up um, uh, connections and links. So very quickly, in other words, you know, in, in preparation of, of March 26. In fact, rapidly, um, the team was phenomenal in terms of the speed and agility that they, they showed to get yes. it all done. And uh, we launched it quite successfully and we continued services. Um, and our members had benefits uh, throughout the period, no problems. No interrupted uh, services and everybody was covered and mobility was assured throughout. Yeah. And Ghana, from your point of view, I mean, how did you guys deal with the lockdown? I, I would imagine similarly quick processes. Yeah, I think similarly to, um, you know, to Willem's uh, realities, none of us could, of course, foresee this. And we all had to respond with uh, significant urgency. Yeah. Um, so I think in a space of, you know, from the announcement that the president made to um, almost getting our teams uh, virtually, that took pretty much about 72 hours, um, if I remember correctly. Wow. Um, so we effectively had to move. And I mean, as I always say to people, we had to effectively move what is a bricks and mortar organization of about 2000 plus people wow. to a clicks and mortar organization. Yeah. Yes. And, and yeah, you know, um, we were also level five uh, classified as essential services. And I think right through that period, we were fully active. Um, yeah. So I think we really had uh, very limited 
uh, disruption in our services. Um, but I mean, I think, of course, dealers were closed. So yeah. I think we also had the advantage of no, no, no need for new business. Yeah, I mean, that, you raise a very important issue there, Ghana. Um, you know, I think that you guys were really ready to kind of, you know, do whatever needed to be done in that period. But then I think you were faced with a new reality, and that was that there really wasn't any work for you. Um, so my question to you would be, I mean, how, how did, the, you know, I, I mean, sorry to be blunt, but I think essentially that's where the period, I mean, we had no vehicle sales for two months in that period. How did the <clears> lockdown <throat> period actually impact on you as West Bank? Yeah, look, it's a very, it's a very interesting question because I think a lot of people, um, you know, look at our business pretty much sing, in a singular format in that, okay. you know, new business is really kind of, uh, and it is important, but I mean, I think there are significant other aspects of our business, such as, you know, we've got a significant cohort in customer services. And mm -hmm. so we had a massive spike. If you can appreciate that most people who were impacted by COVID had to make some form of a payment arrangement. Right. Um, so we were definitely flustered by customers asking to get some relief and, you know, be able to put okay. their installments on hold. Mm -hmm. Se secondly to that was we have a, a massive, um, you know, credit and uh, risk management function. Uh, and so so, you know, we had massive engagements through BASA, through the um, uh, other regulators to be able to get some approval on certain of the policies in which we were, you know, the ambit at which we'd, of course, applied. Mm. So, to be honest, I've never been as busy as what I have been through COVID. Okay. It's been one of our busiest periods. I'll bet there was no new business. Yeah. But definitely just trying to keep the wheels turning. So, um, it, it wasn't... IT a and bandwidth and all those good and wonderful things. Yeah, so it, it, it wasn't, it, I mean, what, what you're telling me, it wasn't a question of, you know, we could hit uh, the golf course at 11, um, you know, kind of spend the day out uh, playing. We had work to do. Um, no. But, but no, I, I no. think, Ghana, I mean, it would have impacted on your business in terms of, I think, one, you know, as you spoke about that core functionality that people look at West Bank, there would have surely been a, a, an impact on that, right? So 100% right. So just to give you an indication, I mean, I think in in um, in April we pretty much had um, one percent um, of activity. Right. Um, and I think in, in in our case that that pretty much was a small number relative to to what we normally write. Yes. Uh, we picked up slightly. We got to about 23% in May. Okay. Um, and amazingly, you know, we started kind of reaching the 90% again in June. So the market has picked up quite significantly. Yes. As a matter of fact, bounced back quicker than what we had anticipated. Yes. But you're 100% right. I mean, we've definitely had uh, been, uh, you know, directly impacted in terms of a slow level of activity, specifically in April yes. and half of May. That's a very interesting yeah. point you're raising. And I definitely want to come back to that because I think this issue of how you kind of recovering is something I want to touch on a bit later. But Willem, um, you know, it's, it's yeah. very interesting to listen to Ghana. Um, they, they didn't go into a kind of a shell and say, OK, well, that's it now, guys. You know, we're in lockdown. There's nothing for us to do. They had to kind of carry on moving forward. And very interesting, and I'm very close to that as well, but you know, perhaps you can just tell us a bit more. It was the yeah. same type of attitude that the AA had. Um, you know, it was like, guys, we've got to carry on moving forward. You, you know, um, Layson, it's quite interesting. Uh, effecting change, you, you need the will to change. Yeah. And what COVID has done, it's accelerated that will, uh, willingly or not. Yes. Um, and what we saw is we had a, a massive acceleration of our digital aggregation initiatives. Okay. So we put um, we put uh, all our all our developers at uh, at capacity to say what are we going to do during this period okay the efficiency we saw picked up in terms of a team's environment or zoom or whatever the case might be whatever right. the connection uh, devices were because you know it's quite interesting uh, a saying that I heard that I that I quite like is work is something we do it's not a place we go to right so normally we go to the office and you'd have one or two or three meetings what you had now is you could do 10 meetings in a day, back to back, yes. um, on a team's environment, because A, you don't travel, and B, you wake up, you have your coffee, and at 8 o'clock, you at your first meeting. Right. So we've launched a, a host of products during this period of time, all digital products, among other, our armed response uh, solution, where there's 180 um, security service providers that could come to your rescue at the press of a button. There's something you download on your phone, it's a panic button, you push it, it gets sent through a call center, right. And within five minutes or 30 seconds, somebody phones you and says, what's your problem? Absolutely, Leighton. So we have two applications, the Rescue Me application, which is your conventional roadside, medical and on um, response assistance for members. Right. And then we have what you refer to as a widget. Outside of that, we could just yes. quickly access it to the public. Anybody could, could, could uh, subscribe to that. It is really cheap, 35 Rand to the public and 25 to a member and 15 yeah. Rand after four yes. family members up to three. 
We've also launched uh, Connected Car, right. a device, a telematics uh, device that's uh, put into your car. Yes. That communicates to you to inform you of driver behavior, harsh okay. acceleration, braking, geofencing, uh, digital lockbooks. And, and you can track the car as well. You can track the car. Beautiful. And you always know that your loved ones are safe. You could track a journey to make sure that they get to their destination. It tracks speeds um, and geofence at the location of the vehicle as well. Okay. Another digital product. And then, of course, uh, what we've recently launched as well is AA AutoFact. Right. So, um, you know, what we've seen from the research is that um, people tend to drive vehicles for longer. Right. And within the second-hand um, dealer market, and I think a big segment even for West Bank, uh, the second-hand uh, trade, um, outside of dealers, you know, even uh, perhaps uh, more so on, on private vehicles, or even if you buy from a dealer, you'd like to verify that VIN number yes. to make sure that the vehicle that you're buying matches the, the nature's document and yes. you're getting what you're paying for. Exactly. So if it's a uh, 2013 Toyota Corolla white, that it actually matches the information to the VIN yes. as one service. Or in your case, a, a white Ferrari 2019 model, or in Ghana's case, a Bentley or whatever the case is. Yes, I think we're on the same page, right. <laughs> not quite, Lance. Yeah. Not, not quite. Not quite. Um, Thanks, Bellum. Thank, thank you. <laughs> we're working hard to get there, Lance. Yes. <laughs> maybe, maybe a few more years. Yes. Um, but, and um, then you've got AA Validate. Yes, and of course AA Validate. So AA Validate uh, around about the 80 Rand as a retail price. Right. You could pay as, as a once-off report. Yes. That would give you all of what the first-year report does. Plus, it gives you any, uh, any information regarding whether there's any incident on that vehicle, whether there's a police uh, matter, yes. whether it's still finance, under finance. Because the last thing you want to do is buy a vehicle that's still under finance. Exactly. Or that has an issue. Exactly. Um, so for that kind of type of items... Um, it's something that we've launched and that we're quite proud of. It's, it's the start of a whole connected environment that we are building. Right. Uh, we're also launching Cycler Assist for our cyclists out there. All right. You know, there's a big, <coughs> South Africans are, are outdoors people. They love their, 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 their rugby, their Present bride, company their excluded, perhaps, yes. Well, you still, have a, you, you still <laughs> like your bride, Leighton. You even need to be safe next to your bride. Right. Um, and we'll still get you running one of these days. Yeah. But, um, you know, to safeguard our... our our, our, our community, um, we're launching the AA Cycle Assist product, which right. in time would also have a tracking device, GSM enabled, that yes. in the event that your bicycle gets stolen, that we can track and recover it for you, and a panic button with Excellent. via Bluetooth device that you could affix to your helmet. Yes. Should you have the need, you could press the button. Um, we have high risk areas that we have uh, an SLA that within 10 seconds you'll have a phone call. Right. In the event that you don't answer, we assume that you're in trouble and will dispatch an armed response. Okay. Uh, person to you for your for your assistance and safety. I think the message that I'm getting from both of you, from Ghana and you, Willem, is that this lockdown period, it 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 came at a very difficult time, and I think that um, the, the 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 actual lockdown was something that people looked at and went, oh goodness, you know, we're in a lockdown period now. But it's all about kind of grabbing an opportunity, and I think that yeah. um, you know, being business people, and I think essentially uh, both of you are perhaps at your hearts entrepreneurs. You looked at the situation and said, well, you know, we're in a tough situation, but how do we deal with it? And you didn't just sit back and say, okay, well, we're going to let this wash over us. You used it as an opportunity to say, well, what can we do in this period and how can we benefit from it and come out at the end of the day, right? I mean, Ghana, that, that was more or less your opinion as well. Spot on. I mean, yeah. I think it's, it goes back exactly to, to what the great Churchill says, never waste a good crisis, right? Exactly. So, I mean, I think this, this effectively gave us an opportunity that would otherwise not have been there to actually dig deeper into our business. Yes. Um, you know, firstly, in terms of the, from a technology perspective, process perspective, value proposition perspective. And I think, you know, exactly to what Willem's talking about, we've done exactly the same thing in terms yes. of re-looking really at what our suite of products actually cover, because I yeah. think the definition of relevance has completely been transformed. 100%. Um, and so I think you're 100% right. I think, we've, you know, the only way through for us here was to say, how do we utilize this really very rare opportunity mm. to completely revolutionize, um, you, know, you know, what it is that we represent to our customers and to our partners mm. once we come out of it. And I think it's very interesting because a lot of people before the COVID, uh, I mean, uh, you know, during the lockdown, a lot of people um, have made remarks that 
COVID has actually highlighted some of the problems we have in our country. Um, so, you yep. know, for instance, if we look at the healthcare sector, there may be issues that were just highlighted. They were there before, but they've been highlighted. Renewal of vehicle licenses, they were there before, <coughs> but it's been highlighted again. But it's about how you approach that, Willem. It's about looking at this as an opportunity and saying, okay, well, we've got this, we've got this issue now. We're all in lockdown, but how can we use it to our benefit? And I think um, the way that you explained it, you put everybody to work. It's a question of we're all at work all the time type of thing. Let's get the job done. No, to echo uh, Churchill quote, as, as Ghana said, you know, as he said, when you're going through hell, what do you do? You keep going. Yeah. And that's what we did. Um, you know, and uh, similar things, we we in the business of lobbying for our members yeah. and uh, promoting the benefits of the public. So similarly, we, we ran a, a petition to extend driver's licenses where the DLTCs weren't issuing those licenses. Yes. Within four or five days, we had 21,000 responses. Yeah, very and good. We, we assisted the public to, exactly. to extend it, I think, at the moment to January. We, don't, we won't leave it there mm. because those problems still not are still not uh, to dealt with. But it gave us the opportunity to kind of relook at things and say, guys, we're in a bit of a, we're in a, bit of a, a, a bad situation. Let's not make it worse. Let's take the best from it and let's work through it. Ghana, you mentioned earlier, and just on this topic of kind of powering through a, a tough situation, you mentioned earlier that April and May were really, you know, I mean, April was, I think, a disastrous month for the, for the auto industry just generally, right? Um, May, I think we started to see some recovery in that. And I think, you know, in, in August, uh, you know, we were kind of at the same levels in terms of sales as we were in August 2019, yeah. okay? Yeah. Um, which is great news. I mean, you know, looking at where you've come from uh, in terms of West Bank and, in, and what you did, I mean, are you optimistic about the future economically? Yeah, so later, I think, you know, I don't have the luxury of being pessimistic in my job, right? <laughs> um, so, so I think, you know, um, I have to be optimistic and I really am optimistic. I mean, I think I think the opportunities that have really uh, been presented by, by COVID for our business is really quite massive. Um, you know, we've really had to go back and look at the extent to which we deeply leverage technology, uh, you know, um, different product sets, et cetera. And so I think the stuff that we are currently working on now, we probably would have only touched that stuff, you know, either, you know, next year or probably sometime in the future. And we've, of course, had to pull that forward. Mm. And so I think, you know, as, as things start to really start to normalize, um, you know, we, we, we effectively would have to reshape what our promise and what our, what our, our value is to our customers. So I'm actually very excited about it. Now, let's just talk about the sales number for a second. Mm. I think I'll basically talk about a total uh, uh, comparative year on year. I think new cars still remain significantly down. Right. And one has, of course, got to understand that. I mean, I think the, the, the you know, the, the rental uh, market has completely been, um, you know, uh, hammered. Yeah. And so I think we've seen that we've seen the impact of that in as far as, you know, what is registered as far as dealer sales are concerned. And so, I mean, I think, you know, Willem spoke about it. We've seen a significant spike in, in, in the demand and the actual um, sales of used cars, mm. um, you know, in, in, in South Africa. And so if we start to look at our numbers on a total basis, I mean, you're 100 percent right from a total perspective at a portfolio level, very much compare, you know, comparable. But if we start to break it down into segments and you start to look at price, uh, price points, you can almost see the luck segment continue continues to to bleed you know significantly sure. much more than your 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 sub 250,000 mm. uh, you know k market um you know we've seen we've seen the 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 sub 120 also starting to pick up more than what you know historically um you know it had a run rate of so i just think there's a lot of dynamics yes that have definitely you know come to the fore um in terms of you know the the, the lockdown and and um, the impact of covid on um you know uh, individuals um disposable income but it's not a question um, that, I mean, Willem, you know, to you, we, we, we can't go sit in a corner and cry about this, right? I mean, we, we know that we've got economic problems in our country, and I think everybody's open about that. But, I mean, are you optimistic about the future? Layson, let, let's not fool around. Uh, if you look at all the indices and you look at uh, consumer debt ratios to income, uh, I don't want to have that conversation. Yeah. It's known. Yes. So, so, so let's not ignore those facts. But... I, I concur with Ghana. I, I really like that we don't have the luxury of being pessimistic. So absolutely, we have to be positive. And I'm extremely excited about the future of this country. I think, you know, economic cycles over time. Um, this is not the first pandemic the world has ever seen. Yeah. Markets crash, they, they bounce back, they retract and they recover. Um, I think, you know, within and Ghana can perhaps attest to this, we, we would have seen a, a massive retraction in April, uh, the month of May, no trade, and then 
you may even have seen a spike um, of trade coming back in the months following. Mm. And I think over time it, it would settle down to a normality. Mm. Um, yeah. Not ignoring other sectors of, of industry, if you look at what happened to the airlines and speaking to some friends, um, particularly pilots had been adversely affected. I mean, those, those industries would be irrevocably changed for mm. life. But from a consumer perspective and a consumer view and within the mobility environment, mm. um, mobility will, will uh, prolong and endure. And you may even see more activity and a proliferation of a different type of market sure. emerging. Yeah. Um, what the virtualized environment has taught us as well is the acceleration of digital initiatives. Mm. And yeah. um, I, I listened to economists 20 years ago at, a, at an event saying, the future of the economy would be about the consumer. That's what it's about. Right. And what Digital Initiatives is doing, it's opened up a dialogue between business and consumers directly yes. through yeah. digital means. Mm. And I'm extremely excited to see what we can do with this and to enhance and expand products within the country and add real value mm. to people's lives in many different ways. I mean, I guess if we were pessimistic about the future and if Ghana was pessimistic about the future, we wouldn't be doing the things we're doing now. We wouldn't be launching the products we're doing now. We wouldn't be investing in the things we're investing in right now. We'd be kind of closing up shop. But I think um, it's a testament to the fact that I think there are businesses out there who are mature enough to understand, as you said, Willem, it is cyclical. And that there is a future out there and we've got to work towards that future. So I think it's very important that people, especially guys on, on Ghana and yours level, that are optimistic about the future because you're going to be driving us getting there essentially, right? Layton, uh, within the West Bank environment, I, I have seen the digital processes and how it functions. It's extremely efficient. Yeah. It's I incredibly user-friendly in terms of how uh, if an ideal takes place. Yes. And these things, uh, however long it's been there, is the kind of thing that e captains of industry would start thinking of as sure. to how they can improve the consumer's experience. Excellent. And how that user experience is, um, is going to evolve. Mm. The future sees the advent of new positions emerging. Mm. Mm. You know, we speak, yeah. we've spoken about um, five or, or 10 years ago, the biggest buzzword was disruption, disruption, disruption. Well, guess what? We got disrupted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in a big way. By, by, by a force we didn't even see coming, eh? <laughs> no. By a force we didn't no. even see coming, exactly. So every, every commercial agreement we've ever signed, uh, you read the force majeure, the force majeure clause, and you think, <laughs> well, you know, this is just wow. lawyers. Well, well, yeah. here we go. Exactly. So, so as hard as it's been, um, uh, and, and within sympathy to, to all those that's been affected worldwide, it's been a phenomenal change agent um, to sure. us and, and all around. And we've seen an opportunity to add more value to our members. We understand that uh, the economy is under pressure. We understand mm. families have had severe trauma mm. where breadwinners may have lost their jobs, where families do not have income at all, yeah. where industries are getting wiped out. Yeah. If, um, and you'll know which those segments are, and we're very sensitive to that. <coughs> so the products we're launching, um, remember, we're a non-profit organization. Our, our main objective is not to drive profit. Obviously, we need to sustain and survive within the, the AA. Mm. But it's to affect people's lives and to make meaningful change to provide products that mm. would enable members and the public at large to have high-value products um, mm. at a low price. Exactly. And that and is our drive and that's our passion. Absolutely. And I, and I mean, I agree with that. And that's probably where people like West Bank come into the picture, because I think your consumer focus is very important to you as well, Ghana. 100%. I mean, I think there's no question about the fact that Leighton, without customers, we've got no business, right? Right. So I think we, 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 we're quite acutely aware that we are in a highly contested market. And, you know, I always say to my team, whether we like it or not, to a large degree, we're pretty much a means to an end. No mm -hmm. one wakes up on any given morning asking to go buy money. <laughs> okay, so you want to go buy a vehicle, and and then you kind of kind of engage us to help you, of course, access your dream. And I think, you know, we need to almost make sure that we plug ourselves in right through the ownership cycle um, yes. of, of of a customer's journey. And so, you know, if you start to think about the way in which we would define customer centricity, uh, you know, I mean, I think it's quite a widely used name, but I think it's about the ability to to be able to provide contextual solutions to a customer through a channel of choice at the time that they want it mm. in a cost effective manner. Now, these things sound easy, yes. you know, when you when you kind of mention them in one sentence, but let me tell you to try and create them um, in uh -huh. a seamless manner. Uh, it's really quite a challenge, sure. you know. Um, but 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 again, you know, as I've said, we don't have the luxury of 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 being pessimistic. I mean, you know, uh, if you show me a CEO today who who kind of throws their hand, uh, you know, their hands up in the air, I think this is probably a time for them to hang in the towel because sure. they're in the wrong seat. 
So I think you really got to look deep here and kind of think about, you know, partnerships are going to become even more critical, in my humble opinion. Yeah. Um, ecosystem play is going to become an imperative, um, you know, differentiator. And I think critically, I think Willem mentions the point, but I think the ability to 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 create connections um, directly with the customer, you know, mm. this does not necessarily mean getting rid of a, a an intermediary channel, but it's about re-looking at really the role and the value of the intermediary yes. in the context of the services being offered holistically you know so so i think it's really going to question all elements um of what you do as a business you know um, i mean i think and if it you're requires a monopoly, you to be innovative and flexible and, and i think that the message i'm getting from both of you um is that certainly uh west bank i think has had a look at this and said we need to innovate and i know for sure because having worked with you i think that's one of your buzzwords Willem. we've got to be innovative and we've got to be flexible as well and at the end of the day the customer's got to benefit from that experience right yeah, look, Leighton, I mean, again, you know, so you'll, you'll probably say you say a lot of things to your team, but I also say this to my team that, you know, history and our, 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 our staff will quite simply remember us by how we have been able to transition this business pre the crisis yes. to post the crisis. OK, so, hmm. so, you know, when the wind is behind your back, everybody can cycle quite quickly. The challenge <laughs> is when you're, of course, having to cycle uphill yes. uh, into the wind. And so, you know, we've got to be innovative. innovative you know, innovation is, got to be, is already part of our DNA, but we've really got to make sure that th that innovation produces contextual solutions. It's, you know, hmm. I always hear innovation, but if innovation doesn't really resolve my angst points, but makes it easy for you to do business, then it's not really the right level of innovation. Yes. It's about innovating to solution for my needs. Yes. Um, in effect. So it's about, you know, really being solution orientated. So, yeah, I think it's but definitely solution, going to. Yeah, I mean, solution yeah. orientated is where you are as well. You don't want to just create products for the sake of creating products. They've got to benefit the consumer, right? Well, you need a contact point. You, you can create products and, and so you innovate as, as much as you like. Yes. Um, it's meaningless if the consumer doesn't find value because you'll have no uptake. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Something I just want to touch on with, with Ghana um, and speaking to some of, uh, some of industry, uh, what we're finding is, um, you know, the biggest question now, and I saw a paper being published uh, within this week of, in the UK, where a virtualized working environment seems to be here to stay. And certainly for us, uh, we're adopting a hybrid solution where support services would be working from home and operational services would be likely to be based at the office. And um, this is something that we've now adopted. We, um, we're making this a permanent fixture. And the challenge is uh, spending all the capital, capital to virtualize an environment. It's, it makes no sense to undo any of that. So mm. that is the way the, for the future for us. And it would be interesting to learn uh, from you, Ghana, how, how you guys are handling it. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's something similar. It's actually been quite a tricky, quite a tricky time um, because, you know, I, um, my, my view of this has been right through this whole process when we've actually gone virtual. As I've said, we know we've moved from a bricks and mortar to a clicks and mortar organization has been we've got to continually be cognizant of the social inequalities that exist um, within the context of our country. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we never had the pressures of ESCOM um, largely within level five and level four. And I think things work quite smoothly. Um, but, but, but I think the reality is, I think as we start to kind of pick up momentum, one can expect that some of the known realities, and we've started to see that kind of coming back to the fore, you know, um, load shedding stage one, stage two, and so forth and so on. And so a lot of our people, of course, get adversely impacted by this. So the way in which we would be targeting this or approaching this would largely be, like you, you're saying, um, on a hybrid model. So effectively, we're going to cut down capacity quite significantly, uh, north of 50%. I can, you know, almost tell you that. Um, and in some of the areas, I'll also be moving away from, you know, owned um, infrastructure into rented infrastructure where we will only be paying for utilization. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we're going to try and make sure that we minimize the actual physical presence um, of, of, of our offices. Again, I must add, we're quite fortunate that, you know, we, of course, exist from the first rent womb. So we can largely um, leverage, you know, uh, infrastructure from First National Bank um, and, and, and RMB um, alike. Mm. And so I think, you know, this this approach, um, which is what we term productive me, is really kind of what what at a first rate level we're really trying to push for towards making sure that, you know, to your earlier point, people can work from anywhere. You know, yes. it's not about what it's not about where you do it from. Um, and, you know, and so we've done a lot of that stuff. Um, and then I think, you know, you're 100 percent right. I mean, the, the the virtual kind of the virtual arrangement is it's going to be here forever. We can almost accept that. Mm. Um, and so we're also really looking at, you know, the type of tools that we need to provide, the employee value proposition that's required. Mm. Um, you know, the kind of the, the working type of 
arrangement because some people prefer working in the morning, some people will work, prefer working in the evening. Some people prefer um, and never so there's working definitely a lot of work in as far as how do we can get the balance. <laughs> exactly, you know, some people prefer just chilling and, and earning a full salary. Exactly, you know. So, well, so yeah, it's been note, quite tricky. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I think uh, based on from what both of you have said. Um, you know, if if we could have spoken for an hour, we would have. But I'd like to cut it short there because I think we've covered a lot of ground. Uh, we've spoken a lot. Um, Ghana, thank you so much for being available uh, and for being able to join us. And Willem, thank you very much for, for giving us the opportunity as well to do this. So Ghana, thank you very much. I think for, um, for anybody who's watching this, they certainly will have a new understanding of what it is that West Bank does. They'll have an appreciation for what the AA is doing. Um, and I think we need to do this again. Ghana, thank you very much for your time. Perfect. Thank you very much for having me, Leighton, and all the best to Willem as well. Perfect. Oh, no, thanks so much. All the best to you, and uh, thank you, Leighton. Perfect. Thank you. And with that, I want to thank both Ghana and Willem Krunewald for being our guest today. Uh, there are certainly many issues that are facing um, South Africa today, but uh, one of the key takeaways, I think, from today is be positive. There is a good economic future for this country, but it's going to require some hard work. Thank you very much, and until next time, goodbye.